Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Advanced Player's Guide Character Sheet Pack. Now this is one of the latest accessories for the Pathfinder 2nd Edition role-playing game and is meant to tie in with the release of the Advanced Player's Guide hardcover book. Uh, so this is a character sheet pack that will give you some character sheets for those new classes that were included. Uh, but there is a bit more in here as well, so it's not just those four classes. Uh, so this is a product very similar to the original character sheet pack for 2nd edition Pathfinder. Uh, so this came out right alongside the release of the core rulebook. Uh, it retailed for $14.99 and essentially had some basic character sheets in here as well, including uh, specialized ones for each of the character classes <clears throat> where we put in like fill in automatically their proficiency levels and training levels for certain skills, uh, armor, weapons, uh, any abilities that the class gets uh, that everyone that's a part of that class would get uh, like a barbarian's rage or bard's you know bardic music or lore <clears throat> so it gives you all that information in there so it was a really really cool product and one that I highly recommended back then uh, so let's take a look at the Advanced Player's Guide Character Sheet Pack. So taking a look at the back here, uh, so we get all the information that we have. The retail price on this is $14.99 US dollars as well. Uh, and it just says, advance your character. Track your hero statistics and accomplishments with these full color character sheets designed to record exactly what your character needs. This package includes a folder to store character sheets with reference information such as game actions, a summary of crucial conditions and death and dying rules. A specialized character sheet for each class from the Pathfinder Advanced Player's Guide, the Investigator, Oracle, Swashbuckler, and Witch. Class features and special actions are already filled in. Uh, this also includes a sheet for evil champions and for oracle spells and curses. Uh, three standard character sheets suitable for any character or for a character of any class, plus an alternate simpler sheet and expanded sheets to track your character inventory, campaign notes, adventure logs, NPCs, and spells, plus a specialized sheet for animal companions and alchemy books. So uh, it also gives you a spot to fill in your name and your Pathfinder Society number if you uh, are involved with organized play through Pathfinder Society. Uh, so it's great to have that there. It was on the back of the original uh, character sheet pack as well, so it can double as the folder that you take with you um, to your games and yeah, it's just nice to have that sort of uh, versatility uh, with this product So I think that that's always a nice little uh, extra that they throw, throw in there All right, so here we have our sheets and I'm just going to look at uh, the left side first and then move on to the right side uh, But first on the inside flaps you have your conditions including death and dying information and then in behind here in behind all the sheets you have your basic actions specialty basic actions uh, hero point information and skill actions. So what they what, what they sort of take um, to do, like one or two actions, depending on uh, the uh, the ability that you're looking to use. So starting with the uh, the sheets here, we have our three standard uh, character sheets. So these are the same ones that you would find in the back of the core rulebook. So I'm not going to go into any uh, real detail here because these are like so the, the standard ones. If you have Pathfinder Second Edition, if you have the core rulebook, uh, then you have access to this sheet already. So it just gives you your basic information on the front, your stats, armor class, saving throws, uh, spell or attacks, skills, perception, hit points. And then on the back it just gives you your, where you can write in your feats and some of your actions, activities, and free actions and reactions. So there are three of those. Oh, just set those aside. Uh, then we have your sort of your secondary sheet where you can put in your character sketch if you are artistically inclined. I am not, so that field always turns into notes for me. Yeah, whenever I do, on the very, very rare occasion, I get to make a character. Uh, personality, information about your party, so you can actually write in you know, their names, who plays them, and certain other notes. Um, this is sort of an underrated section um, that, because I'm always bad at remembering names, and I'm bad enough remembering a person's real name, so when it comes to their character name, that's <laughs> usually even worse. So uh, I like that that's there. Uh, I think that's just a nice little addition uh, to have. I think the, the regular character sheet had it as well, uh, but it is for me it's just sort of an underrated section of the character sheet that I think is really, really well done. Uh, campaign notes, uh, so there's a spot here for just general notes, a spot here for campaign notes, so allies, enemies, organizations, and where they're located, 
and achievements if you want to keep track of that. Um, I'm not like a big fan of like the achievement system. It's never something I cared about going like for the Xbox or PlayStation stuff. Uh, but there are people that love that sort of thing, so you can keep track of that if you want. Uh, highest damage dealt, highest check total, uh, how many times you've died. Uh, most foes, uh, I'm assuming slain in one battle, most gold pieces gained at once, furthest distance fallen, uh, strongest foe defeated, and titles claimed. So, you know, again, if that's the sort of thing that you're into, uh, you've got that as well. And then on the back, <clears throat> we have our uh, sort of treasure or equipment section, including a spot here for all of your uh, worn items. So uh, I actually really like this quite a bit. It, you know, you can write in basically where what slot it takes up, uh, the de basic details on it, if it's invested, what its bulk is, um, and then you can just put all that in there. Uh, gems and art objects, holdings and assets, which I feel are underutilized in RPGs, um, at least modern RPGs. Your coinage, uh, stored money, and where it's stored. Uh, permanent items and consumables are separated, so I, I like that as well. Uh, and then you just have your basic supplies like rations, water, ammunition, rope and torches, as well as your bulk uh, information. So, uh, great stuff there as well. And there should be, I believe there's three of those sheets uh, as well to go with everything else there. All right, and here we have our basic spell sheet. So it gives you your spell slots per day, and um, your you can write in your cantrips and your spells, your innate spells, what your tradition is, if you prepare spells or if you cast them spontaneous what your saving throw DCs are for your spells and what your spell attack roll is. <clears throat> uh, spell casting abilities, so if there's other things that your spell casting sort of influences, you can write that in there as well. And then on the back, you just have more room for more spells, and you also have a spot to write in uh, the rituals that you know if you have any uh, rituals that you do. So again, a really cool sheet there. <clears throat> and then we have our formula sheet. So this is for the alchemist, so we have the formulas, so you can write down uh, what they are, what the level is, what the price is uh, for it, if you're looking for that. Your money table. Um, so I think this is what it costs you to um, to learn, I think. Um, I've never actually played an alchemist, uh, but this <clears throat> does seem like it would be something that would be very useful. Uh, crafting feats, crafting achievements, again, if you're into achievements, and specific crafting notes. Uh, requirements, so it also gives you, okay, the requirements, success or failure. Uh, okay, so yeah, cool. Uh, and then on the other side here, we have our companion sheet. So animal companions or any, you know, anything else along those lines, um, you can put in here and it, you, know, you can write in their ability modifiers, uh, armor class, saving throws, their attacks, uh, how they advance, if they advance like mature, nimble, or savage, um, advanced maneuvers, and their skills. You can also do a sketch if you're artistically inclined. Like I said, I am, I am not. Uh, so there'll probably be notes there as well. Uh, but this is just a great sheet to have uh, as well because I find that, um, at least in the groups that I've uh, run for in the past, historically, uh, animal companions always seem to find their way into the group. Um, some players are notorious for them more than others, but regardless, this is an excellent sheet to have uh, for them. So, and they're a uh, pretty decent part of Pathfinder 2nd Edition, so it's nice to see that they have a, uh, a full-fledged uh, character sheet available for them. And then we have our second stack here. <clears throat> so we just have our open gaming license on the back. Uh, that's pretty standard for all uh, Pathfinder stuff. Uh, we have our adventure log. It's just a great big spot here to fill in your, your just basically more notes. Um, so I love this because I like to take notes on the rare occasions that I actually get to play. So this is a sheet that would get some use. And then you have your NPCs and enemies uh, information you can fill in here. So that includes their name, where you, they're located, what, your, what their affiliation is, or maybe what your affiliation to them is, uh, description and notes, interests, and you can even have a little check list here for if they're your ally, if they're your enemy, or if they're just sort of uh, ambivalent to you, um, or just you know neutral or whatever it may be, as long as they're not like a strong ally or enemy you could write down that they are neutral. So again, just a useful thing to have, especially again, if you're really bad at names like I am. So this is another sheet that I would probably get uh, quite a bit of use out of. All right, up next we have our class specific sheets. So these are essentially your standard character sheet. 
that we saw the first uh, few of when we opened up this package. However, this is specific for the investigator class here. And uh, if you're not familiar, we'll just sort of have a quick look at it here. Uh, so what this sheet does is it fills in, it shades in uh, your training levels um, for your proficiency levels, whatever you want to call it, uh, for saving throws, armor class, uh, class DC, perception, uh, skills. So for example, the investigator always gets uh, basic training in the society skill and then your weapon and armor proficiencies. So it fills all that in for you, so you can just focus on the you know um, the, the bigger uh, things to, to fill in, like the actual numbers. Uh, and then on the back here, it uh, lets you or automatically fills in all of the elements of your character uh, that you get automatically. So most classes have a huge amount of variation and choice that you can take through feats or some. Uh, class features will have more than one option that you can choose for it. Um, once you choose it, you're generally locked in. Uh, but it gives you basically all of those standard uh, aspects that your character will get. And uh, if there are ones where you sort of choose or customize it a little bit, um, there'll be a spot to sort of fill that in. Uh, and then we have our investigator actions. So we have the pursue a lead, uh, the clue in uh, ability, as well as devise a stratagem and uh, Strategic Strike. Um, so it gives you all that information there. And uh, yeah, it's just a really cool, uh, it's just really handy to have these sheets already filled in for you. So we've got that one. And then we have the Oracle class. So again, it's the same uh, basic idea that you're gonna have for the next few. So we have the Oracle along with all of the standard uh, features that they get. Um, you know, their mystery, um, their, you know, again, their feats. And then we have the spellcasting sheet to go along with the, uh, with the Oracle class. So you have their curse and, you know, like the effects of like minor, moderate, major, uh, extreme, and overwhelmed. And it just gives you, again, all the, the basic information uh, that you need to fill in, including divine, spontaneous spellcaster. So that's already there. You can check that off if you want, but it actually says spontaneous there, which helps quite a bit. And then on the back, you just get the standard uh, extra section for writing in your spells and your rituals. All right, up next, we have our swashbuckler. So this is a class that I think is just really kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. I don't know if I'd want to play one long term, but I think it would be a lot of fun to play one for like a one-off uh, type, uh, type of game. Uh, but yeah, so with the swashbuckler, it gives you all their information. Again, all the stuff that the class gets automatically. But then you have your little section here for their panache abilities. So uh, yeah, just it's it's great. And so for swashbuckler style, it actually gives you the little check boxes that you can fill in for whichever style it is that your character uses. Uh, and as your like precise strike goes up in level, again it gives you a little spot that you can actually check mark. Um, you know that you're up to that level. So again, really really cool stuff there. Um, just again handy. Just. You know, something that will be a bit of a time saver. Uh, and then finally, we have the witch class. So, again, it just fills everything in for you. Uh, gives you a little spot here for your familiar uh, and some information uh, for them as well. So that's really cool. And then we have the evil champion. This, <clears throat> this is one that, honestly, I'm not personally interested in. I've never really liked um, running campaigns for players who play evil characters. Uh, in my experience, I've never seen anyone really do it well. <clears throat> they always want to play an evil character like it's just this homicidal, you know, maniac. And uh, with, like, no subtlety, you know, nothing. Like, you know, most, most some, a lot of the more memorable villains are ones that are sort of, you know, conniving and patient. And, you know, will look like the hero in public when really they're, you know, just, sort of just like the worst uh, in reality. So... I don't know. It's just, it's not my thing. But if you're looking to play an evil champion, uh, here you go. Uh, the only situation where I might consider really want allowing people to play this one, uh, I mean, if someone really had their, their heart set on it, I wouldn't say no, because I don't like doing that. Um, but a situation where I would sort of almost want to see someone play one is a campaign style where it's like a greater good type of campaign. So you have people from, you know, very different um, moral backgrounds, um, you know, working together because there's something far worse than the differences in their ideologies um, that, you know, could affect the world around them. So that might be kind of neat, um, but, you know, as I said, this is an option that's there. 
if that's you know a class that you're interested in playing. It doesn't do anything for me, but you know there are people out there that like it. So last we have our simplified character sheet. Uh, now I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb here and I will probably be proven wrong very, very soon. Uh, but the Pathfinder 2E beginner box is supposed to be coming out very soon. I think within a month or so of this video coming out. Uh, so I kind of feel that because beginner boxes tend to be more simplified than the standard version of the role playing game, that this is probably the same kind of sheet that they're going to use in that set. But again, I could be wrong. I've been wrong a million times before. Uh, so I will probably be wrong in this, but it's just, it was the first thought that I had is, you know, this might be <clears throat> the starter set or beginner box, um, character sheet style. Uh, but let's just have a quick look at it here. So it is, it is quite a bit different than our standard sheet. So just for like a side by side comparison, here is our standard sheet on the left and here's our simplified sheet on the right. First of all, the simplified sheet is predominantly like black and white. Now it's not entirely because there's like some of the text is blue, the, the heart shape there, uh, that's brown, um, but <clears throat> this would be a much more uh, printer friendly character sheet than these ones here. Um, <clears throat> I would absolutely use these, but I would probably take them to like Staples or somewhere <clears throat> where I can print them off for way, you know, way less than having to replace the ink cartridges on my printer because they always seem to be out whenever I, you know, would actually want to use them the most. But anyway, uh, so it's like it's it's very different looking. So first up, you have your character name, ancestry and heritage, background and class information, which is great. Your level and your experience point amounts. Um, a lot of people that I know and myself included, I use like milestone advancement. Uh, but if you do track experience points, there's a spot for it there. Uh, pronouns and alignment, um, if you, you know, decide to use, um, you know, that in your games, then that's there for you and that's great. Uh, player name, current hit points, max HP, uh, notes and conditions, <clears throat> and then you have your perception. So you just basically write in what your total bonus is, if you're proficient in it, and uh, senses and notes. Uh, so there's a little note section here, we also have one for your speed. Uh, so that's great, and then you got your fortitude, reflex, and your uh, will saving throws. And again, if you're proficient in them, again, this is why I think that this might be the, the beginner box sheets, because you would only ever have, like, basic training, I think, for most of these. Uh, so it would just, you know, again, it's a simplified version of, of the sheet. I will say this also might be a better sheet to present to beginners that are just getting into RPGs, because, like, even as someone who's been running games, for 20 years, uh, by the time Pathfinder 2E came out, uh, I will admit this sheet looked kind of overwhelming the first time I saw it. The playtest one, it was even more so because it was like sideways and it was just, uh, it, it, it was kind of intimidating like for, for me at first. So I think that this would be a much easier one to get beginners comfortable with the game and then eventually you can start steering them towards filling out the, uh, the more standard one if that's what you want to do. Uh, armor class. Armor bonus, shield bonus, your shield's hit points, uh, armor proficiencies, so unarmored, light, medium, and heavy, and then we have our skills here, again, if you're proficient with them, and a spot for notes. I actually kind of like the spot for notes, uh, because you could write in things like this, the, the skill DC for, like, medicine treat wounds, and how much healing it is, uh, the frequency, like, so there's stuff that you could do with that, um, that I like having that spot there for. Uh, you also have your languages, and then we have our attacks. And uh, the attack section is, again, very stripped down. Uh, but I have to admit, I actually kind of like this uh, section here quite a bit, because, you know, it has your attacks, so it has uh, three melee uh, su uh, ones here, and then two ranged attacks. You can write in what your weapon is, what your attack bonus is, and then just you can just write the straight damage. Uh, so if you look on the, 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 the standard sheet, uh, for a melee strike, you put in, like, you know, the actual calculations, and then what the dice is for your damage, and then your strength modifier, and just all these other things. So I kind of like the more, again, straightforward approach there. Um, and honestly, this is something that, if I were creating an NPC, uh, like a villain for the players to go up against, this is the sheet that I might use, uh, because it, it just gives you the basics of what you need, 
uh, which, you know, again, I kind of like. So it just lets you fill in uh, all the information there. And then you have your proficiencies, unarmed, martial, uh, simple, and advanced. Oh, and, oh, sorry, and it also has a spot for other weapons. So, for example, uh, some classes, uh, like the, uh, the cleric, for example, you're proficient in simple weapons, but you're also proficient in your deity's um, um, like favored weapon. So you would actually be able to write in what that weapon proficiency is. So, again, uh, just kind of nice to have that there. And then you just have, again, your simplified uh, ancestry feats, class feats, uh, skill feats in general, uh, skill in general feats, a little spot for equipment, your bulk, and then your spells. So attack roll DC, and then the traditions and whether it's prepared or spontaneous, that's pretty much the same. Your spell slots, um, and again, I kind of like the spell slots per day and spell slots remaining. On the standard sheet, it's more like, you know, spells per day and then spontaneous slots uh, remaining. I guess the idea is that you would write in what your uh, prepared spells are in the section below, uh, but I, again, I kind of like it just being basic slots remaining instead of just, you know, which ones uh, you have uh, prepared for the day. So, again, I kind of like that. Uh, at the same time, though, I understand why they didn't do that, because in Pathfinder 2e, uh, prepared spellcasters do actually prepare the specific number of each uh, individual spell they want to cast. So, uh, for example, a, a cleric couldn't just cast, uh, use any spell slot to cast a heal spell, they have to have it actually prepared for, like, a first level one. If they wanted to use two, uh, have two first level uh, heal spell prepared, then you would have to two, two of them. So, I do kind of get it, but at the same time, I still like that there. And then cantrip spells, and then your focus spell information. So, your focus points, and uh, just a spot to write in what your focus spell is, and sort of what it does. So, yeah, overall, you know, uh, it's, it's a neat package. I, I Overall, I like uh, everything that's sort of included here, and I think it's a pretty decent, worthwhile uh, package to get. Um, I love the convenience of having this filled out. Now, again, you don't necessarily need everyone at the table to have their own copy of this, if, you know, that's, like, I, I wouldn't suggest that necessarily. Uh, but for me, like I said, if I were running a game as a game master, I like the idea of having these sheets uh, myself so that if people want to make certain characters, then we can just copy the specific class sheet that they need and then you can go from there. So I think it's overall, this is a really solid purchase. I love the additional new sheets that are in there, um, like the Animal Companion and Alchemy book, I think is great. Uh, having the NPC uh, sort of tracker sheet um, there's just a lot of great stuff there, so I think you get a decent amount of, of stuff in here for the price that you're paying. Uh, again, I like to photocopy everything. I'm not a fan of actually writing on the pages that are presented here, um, but that's just me. Other people aren't so worried about it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's an absolutely great value, especially if you you know photocopy everything, and uh, that way you just you always have the sheets on hand, and you can just you know print off whichever one. Uh, that you need. So again, I, I, I really like it. I highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, like like pretty much always, I'd say Paizo's accessories uh, really do impress. And their character sheets, uh, again, are really, really well done. And I just I love the idea of having those class-specific ones. I love the idea of having the expanded sheets. And I really love the simplified sheet. Uh, like I said, if, if nothing else, I would use it as a game master for my NPC characters that I would uh, create. So uh, overall, I think it's really well done, and I do recommend uh, checking it out if you get the opportunity at your local game store. Uh, so uh, thanks once again to Paizo for sending this to me uh, for the purposes of doing a review on. Uh, I really appreciate you know their um, willingness to, to work with me, and like I said, hopefully it'll help you know push a few of these out the door. Uh, so thank you all for taking the time to watch. If you've used these sheets in your campaigns, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I always like to sort of hear people's feedback. And, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on the simplified sheet and the more specified ones for, you know, alchemy, animal companions, NPCs, and whatnot. So, again, thank you, everyone. Your support means the world to me, and I will see you next time. Take care.